It's fair to say the state of Queensland has become the sick man of Australia, as its problems with crime, with housing and youth justice continue to spiral. Well, it's not only that, but its residents have been forking out at least $500,000 a day for stupid schemes like the WellCamp Quarantine Centre, whose lease finally expired today. And that's despite it being shuttered since August. Now, the true cost of this expensive project is being hidden from our view, despite probes from the State Auditor General that have been going on for nearly a year. So how much more should Queenslanders have to endure of their inept state government? We're joining me now to discuss this and more in Queensland Opposition Leader David Crisofulli. First off, David, welcome to the show. Will we ever learn the true cost of this WellCamp project or is this going to expose how willingly the Queensland government just threw away taxpayers' money? Corey, talk about a failure in service delivery and a failure in properly planning. This was a dead set white elephant from day one. It was only ever happened because of a get square with the former federal government. They were playing politics, they wanted to create a wedge. And all they created was over 220 million reasons why Queensland taxpayers just don't trust them anymore. So I just want to step out how absurd this was from the get-go. You had the federal government building a facility of their own. The Queensland government was still paying for vacant hotel rooms in the city that they were contracted for many months to come. Barely a handful of people went through it. And here's the absolute kicker. They paid $220 million dollars. That's $500,000 per day, every single day. And we don't even own the asset. We hand back the keys. And if ever you need proof of a government that puts politics ahead of people, this is a glaring example of why this government has to go. Yeah, it's just another example. I mean, I've heard you talk about this many, many times, but it's now coming into the public for the people of Townsville among many other places, fear that fed-up locals may try to take justice in their own hands because government services in Queensland continue to let them down when it comes to protecting them from uh, violent youth gangs. Now, residents have reported that youth crime is out of control by plague proportions. You can't be surprised about it because you've been warning us about it, but how has it come to this, David? Corey, it was Townsville that was the first city that called it out when the state government watered down the laws eight years ago. Eight years ago, they made a conscious decision to water down the laws and the people of Townsville says this is going to end in tragedy. And what we've had is a report released, the government's own report, which shows that year on year since that decision, crime has escalated. And in the 12 months that have just uh, proceeded now, it has reached inferno stage and it's not just Townsville. It's cities right up and down the coast. It's proud communities like Mount Isa and Longreach. It's border communities like Gundawindi, Sunny Coast, Gold Coast, north and south side of Brisbane, and everywhere in between. And they've had enough. And what we have is a generation of repeat hardcore young offenders who know that their rights outweigh the rights of the victim. And we've been calling it out for many, many years. Two years ago, the government said breach of bail as an offence was absurd. We finally got them to adopt our policy word for word, down to the comma. But there is so much more that needs to be done. And if they start listening to our solutions, there is a way through this absolute nonsense. And I've always been an opposition leader that, sure, I'll point out the government's failings, but I also put forward our solutions. And this is what the LNP solutions look like. One, consequences for actions put the rights of the victim ahead of the rights of the offender. Two, unshackle the judiciary. We've got to remove this absolute absurdity of detention being a last resort in the Youth Justice Act. And three, gold standard early intervention. We've got to turn these kids around before they're holding a knife at your door, before they're ramming a police car and goading them to chase them. That's what it's become in Queensland. We are failing at both ends of the spectrum. We're failing the hardcore repeat young thug. We're failing the young person who's early on in their life of crime. And we are failing Queenslanders who just want to go to work and pay their taxes. And they're waking up and the car that they need to go and earn a living in the front yard isn't there because it's been nicked. They have to tell their child that their safe space that's been breached is going to be OK. They're paying insurance premiums through the nose. This is what happens when frontline service delivery breaks down and it is breaking down in Queensland. 
Yeah, congratulations on identifying the problem, but also having some solutions. That's critical for a decent opposition, so well done. Quickly, uh, the Courier-Mail has said the cost of living crisis that's gripping the state is uh, causing a rising number of Queenslanders, Queenslanders to turn to crime to make ends meet. Do you actually agree with this synopsis? Isn't that heartbreaking, Corey? It's got to that stage. And I just have to say to every Queenslander, uh, we intend to have laws to protect you. Uh, we intend to end the youth crime crisis and we intend to empower people to take action and not have to resort to these kinds of things, I can tell you.